Wake up, everyone. All right. Okay, so the tagline to this lightning talk was uh, how I wrote an ensemble to organize list operations and took a big performance hit. Well, now that you're in the movie theater expecting a horror story, uh, it's really more to it than that. I wanted to look a bit at, at uh, Tickle from the point of view of expanding the team, someone who isn't familiar with. TCL, and how it could be made uh, more friendly. So, um, well, I called this Q, but it could actually have several names. L, L, we'll see more later. So the idea was I wanted to add some path list functionality that's typically in uh, TM path to uh, and combine that with the other list operations. I also wanted it to cover the legacy list operations and follow the trend toward ensembles while making it uh, look like other ensembles and keeping compatibility in all directions. So you can mix Q uh, with all the old operations and you never see a difference. So what's the trend to ensembles? Well, I looked at the, uh, the documentation and the the command page has about 110 commands or procs listed on the first page. 17 of those are ensembles, and in the ensembles, there are about 230 subcommands. So the things you, you see are array anymore, array done search, or clock format, for example. And when I was looking at the top level, I thought, well, there are a lot of list operations in there including the TM path ones that I'm interested in. There are also some other ones, but that's talk for another day. So naming, well, naming the ensemble itself, decided on Q, unfortunately, list was taken. And uh, actions with verbs, predicates with markers, modifiers with markers. So we talked a bit. Of course, you can have any name you want using interp alias. Take your pick. So looking around, Ruby, cool, Ruby. Uh, they have this question mark often appearing at the end of predicates. So hello, is it empty? No. Is it ASCII only? Yes. That sort of thing. So I thought that was kind of cute. Um, another thing Ruby does is use the exclamation point, a bang. I suppose there are other ways to say it for uh, operations that change the variable they're applied on. So there's a sort in Ruby, and it leaves unsorted alone. They're still not equal. But there's also a sort and it changes unsorted. So after you do that, it's changed its state. And one of the things I remember when I came back to Tickle having problems with was I sometimes should have used a variable name and I sometimes should have expanded the variable. And I thought that might be a good use for this. We'll see an example. Later, there are other idioms. Any old Lisp programmers here? OK. <laughs> So, do you want to go to lunch? Lunch P, float P, rational P, that exists. In LaTeX, they have these two versions. There's a section and there's a section star. So there, there's some uh, tradition to using modifiers at the end. We won't talk about Perl here uh, with its sigils to indicate what you're after. So. This is just an overview of what's in the, the Q ensemble. The green stuff are just wrappers around things that already exist. We already have an append operator, L append. We have a sign, L assign. Then there's some things, okay, I played with. There's one list person in the audience. There's car, there's cooter, and there's all the other stuff in between, C-A-A-R-D, C-A-D-A-D. R, whatever you like. Then there's a new one. This contains, that's a new functionality. I found I needed that. 
Then there are more wrappers. Um, here, is it empty? I use that. If there's a ver name after it, I put the bang in front. The question really is, is this going to help someone learn and write error-free tickle? Not too far. More subcommands, more wrappers, more extensions. And even a help subcommand, something that I think ensembles could maybe learn from Git, the Git ensemble. What exactly do I need for this subcommand? Then uh, I found out structuring this as an ensemble was a really great way to deal with my disease of implementing stuff nobody needs. So the you ain't going to need it problem. So these were things I thought, well, you're going to need pop and push and shift and range and all that stuff. Well, it turns out I never implemented them because I never needed them in the script I was using uh, where I use these modules. But they could come down the line. So some takeaways. It's a nice ensemble. It looks like the other ones. I did add some functionality I needed. It's not just a reorganization or cleanup of what was there before. Implementers, maybe think about using the question mark on your predicates and the exclamation point where you say the next argument's going to be a variable and I'm going to change its state. A help documentation might be a good idea. And remember yesterday, proc unknown. If I see something like this, no problem. Proc unknown will unroll it into the cars and cooters I need internally that I've already implemented. So here's the horror story. I timed them. OK. The timings weren't completely repeatable, but I'm looking forward to 8.7 when we've got, uh, um, help me out, time. Time rate, yes. So they should be a little better. But it's kind of horrifying to see that the Q range operator, which is just a wrapper around the built in, ended up being 180 times slower. And on average, I dropped the max. So we'll just forget about that. It's still 20 times slower to use a wrapper. I thought, well, hmm, what about if I just alias directly? Okay, it's like, oh my god. It's not as bad as the first time, but you're still talking a penalty of five times. And as a little comparison, the wrappers were much slower than uh, just calling the, the function directly. So you might get a simple speed up by calling it, it as a separate function. But if you're going to go the step over the ensemble, it's going to be even slower. What I can't explain is why replace sped up? Maybe it was just sort of lucky in the hash. Get a mic get a microphone on him. <laughs> okay. Maybe you can repeat that later. Anyway, optimization. Do you want quick and messy versus slow and neat? Specifically the flat land versus the ensemble. Why can't we have quick and neat? <laughs> I think that question's for Donald. <laughs> okay, well the standard rules of optimization. Optimization, apply, first make it work, then make it fast, maybe, if you need to make it fast. And if you're only calling one of these operators once, you know, at the top of your program, don't waste your time trying to make it fast. Um, little use code needs little speed up. And, okay, you might also think, if, if the theory is right, that you're going to help people write correct code faster, you, you may be optimizing your development time by using some of these slower ensembles. But runtime's another issue. So question authorities, you know, are the penalties really horrendous? Using 
Maybe you can use procs to be less horrendous. After compilation, maybe all the penalties go away. You know, this might just be a temporary problem. And ask yourself if these coherent ensembles are better than flatland, because not everything that starts with an L is a list command. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Comments? On the ticker wiki, uh, on the page for namespace, if you scroll some way down, there's a title, make an Elias for a comment. That's a uh, paragraph that I added a couple of years ago. It's a ticker procedure that's well, uh, about 10, 11, 12 lines. And it's it, it does some dirty tricks uh, using some temporary namespace. The, the action is probably not ideal, it could be made faster, but it creates a direct alias, and the, uh, pro, uh, the advantage of that is that it will still be byte compiled. So if you, for example, uh, use that alias to put string lengths into a short S line, the opposite direction of it you <laughs> intend here, but uh, sometimes it's useful. If you want some S line and you use it with such a namespace alias as described on the namespace wiki page, then it will be it will be byte compiled and as such it will be much faster than yeah let's confirm something I've seen before for our audience out there in the internet the tickle wiki is filled with a lot of experience and a lot of good information and if you I just only have to find it <laughs> okay any other questions or comments Okay, so now I will hand over to our next speaker.